So hi, I'm Thomas Mars, and these are records of my life. Thanks so much for being on uh, Records of My Life. How are you today? I'm good, I'm good. You're good? Yeah, very good. Oh, well, good. Where are you calling from? We're in lovely Vancouver, BC. Okay. Which I know... In New York City. Yeah, I, I'm well, not playing Vancouver soon, but I want to go there because I've spent... Yeah, we always we love it there. Where have you been spending your the past uh, few years? The uh, New York City. Now I live in New York City. It's right. been 15 years that I live there, but I... I go to Paris often when we're not in the studio. And then when we're on tour, I go wherever tour takes me. Terrific, terrific. Congratulations on your new album, um, Alpha Zulu. As we said, it's been it's been a while. It's been like six years since the last one yeah. has dropped. You must be you must be super excited. My son, by the way, loves the new single. We've been listening to it. Uh, he's seven and he just like he goes crazy for it. So that's like so uh, do you have a favorite track? On, on the record, or can you give us two who, who you collaborated with? Yeah, the song with Ezra has a special place because it's we, we never collaborated before. We, we had producers, we had, uh, but not, not uh, you know, we never met a do it. Uh, uh, so that's, that one is special. And that's, also, the collaboration it, it was it was really nice to, to to it's I knew I know Ezra from a from before we met through you know music festivals we we play the same music festivals we became friends and then our wives worked together so we spent time together when when uh, we didn't have to play a show hi Jen uh, when we didn't have to play a show and. Um, you know, I people say you shouldn't work with with your friends, or you shouldn't. Uh, when I met my bandmates, we started working together, so we never really knew anything else than than uh, work and friendship. But I guess this would apply to someone you meet as a friend, and then you're not sure what if it's not. So I kept giving Ezra out out. You know, I don't know if you said that like ways to get out of this because I was like, I'm sending you right. a song. I hope you like it, but really, if it's not, I, I kept giving him out when, uh, even when he was telling me, no, I really like the song, I, I want to do it and stuff. I was like, are you sure? And um, yeah, it's, it's, I felt like there was almost some Larry David moments on the, <laughs> at some point <laughs> through a couple of times. Are you really sure? Are you, are you sure? And he must have thought, like, does this guy want me on the song or not? Like, he must have been confused. That's but, right. uh, but yeah, the, so that one, the fact that it worked out perfectly and it's, it's what we thought it would be even better because he added something else. Uh, yeah, that would be my pick. And, two part one, and Winter Solstice, that's another one that we wrote in a different manner because it was remotely done which I thought we'd never do because our band is all about writing songs in a stream of consciousness way and together in a studio. And that was done a different way and it turned out good too. So th these would be my two picks. And two, two quick things, just to clarify. I know you mentioned Ezra from Vampire Weekend for Verdots, and I know you did mention that. Yeah. And um, how did you got you guys just met through through different fest playing festivals and things like that? Because you mentioned you became close friends. Yeah, that you know they were the the only band that backstage while reading books. <laughs> so I think like it instantly were like oh. That, that's refreshing to see <laughs> to see someone that I felt like uh, I think it was Bronco in our band who was always he he made a point one tour to read the entire uh, all of uh, Borges Bor Bor uh, uh, so he had this he had all his books and I would backstage I would see him reading all the time and then I saw. Uh, I think it was Ezra or, or, and uh, reading 
And I was like, oh, that's Bronco. And that behind the book, it was a different guy for once. <laughs> and um, no, but we, it was fun because we, we, yeah, we played a lot of the same festivals. I remember like Oshiaga, Outside Lands. Uh, that's what's nice about music festivals is that you, there's one or two summers where it's the same class of people in in different cities and you you bond over yeah you're part of a circus sort of and you're you're instead of being competitive you 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 bond over uh over meeting in different parts of the world thomas thanks again for being on records in my life we we super appreciate your time records in my life is about you the artist and the records that have inspired you and continue to inspire you i'm going to ask start off with a very personal question philippe zadar was a very close friend and obviously a very important part of your project and your endeavors do you have a do you have a favorite album on which he created or which he produced or collaborated on well he he rescued the first our first album, uh, United, had we had issues with the mixer. We also had issues because our record company thought we were not we were young and we were not good at producing because they never heard us produce anything. But we knew that we wanted to produce our music and and get involved in you know doing the artwork, music videos, and things like that. But on the contract, they, they gave all this power to, I think it was also to get a discount. They gave like production uh -huh. points to this mixer who we didn't know was a producer. And he didn't, he wasn't aware that he, we were not aware that he was a producer. You know, he thought it was clear that he had producing points and that we, so we started fighting and we couldn't agree on anything. And at some point we, solved the mystery and he was like, I'm sorry, I thought you knew and, and he left and Philippe Zdar came to the rescue and really saved this record sonically. You know, he really, uh, he really, everything was there, but it, it wasn't, he understood the record we love and he understood and he knew where we wanted to go. So that record, when I hear it, I just, I don't only hear Zdar's beautiful mixes which he did on different records, but I also hear, like, I also um, picture the savior, the charismatic savior coming to our rescue, uh, like a song like If I Ever Feel Better uh, wouldn't have worked without him because he, he, had, to, he had to dig into the, the, the he came at a, at a time where we heard the songs 20,000 times in different mixes and different things. So he also was really fresh about it. And he, he had a, this, he was this force who came and said, you can, this song should be like this. I think, do you agree? And he was including us. So we were producing with him instead of having a producer that was just closing the gate, you know, just not. The previous producer were not allowed to put our hands on the mixing board. He would get he would get fussy about this. So at some point we are like we cannot work with someone that's sure. that's not involving us. Now you guys other other um, people you've collaborated with like a lot of artists from a Dinosaur Junior, Rihanna, A Track, as you mentioned, Vampire Week. Rihanna, I don't think we've ever. She, I she think was... she. I, I would remember. I don't think we did. But, uh, but, but she did. I, I remember that there's something. There was a viral video that Rihanna yes. did with one of our songs or something. Uh, but it was, it was, uh, no, I wish she'd sing, when I, I mean, but no, never. Blood, Blood Orange was another one. A track. Do you have a favorite record from one of those artists of, of whom? Of whom yeah, I, of all the collaborators. Well, I grew up listening to uh, Dinosaur Jr. and my older brother, David, who's he's nine years older than me, he would take me to shows. And I remember uh, when Whatever School With Me came out, we went to that show in Paris. Wow. Uh, and that was, I played that record over and over because I, I loved that show. 
so much. I, I, uh, that, yeah, that's the, the one I played the most, I think in, in those, uh, in that era. And, and he's, uh, and, uh, I loved how they, the crowd was divided. It, you know, it was really loud. They played for a really short time. And for me, it was like exactly what I wanted to see at the show. And I remember people leaving that show and hearing people being frustrated, saying like, that was too short or it's too loud. Or, and I thought that that's that strength. When you're a teenager and you discover these bands that are, that are not unifying the world, you know, that are not, but that are just, you feel like they're perfect for you. Uh, that that band was like that, so it was really precious to me and the, my bandmates because we were, you know, in our classroom we were the only ones listening to Dinosaur Jr. I, probably other people didn't know about it, but if it, they would hear that band, they'd think it's noise and they wouldn't be interested. Yeah, I mean, it's also cool that just to mention too that you had a brother that shared his his um, his music with you. Yeah, he was he spent a. He spent a year of uh, his uh, sophomore year, no, his junior year in high school, he spent in Seattle in 83. Wow. And so yeah. he came back, uh, he came back, I was in Versailles and, and Prince was on TV. And you know, Prince was, for a kid in Versailles, it looks ridiculous. It's like, you know, like, you cannot like this guy. It's, first it's a girl, <laughs> then he thinks like, and my brother was like, no, no, he's, I was, my, I think I was like seven. My brother was like, no, no, this is the, this is the real deal. Like you have to, and so instantly you go to the, and, and I remember flaunted the Zig Zig Sputnik vinyl that looked like, it was like a, almost like a transformer toy on the cover. So it looked like a toy. It was music, but also it was a toy. Uh, no, it was like a great introduction to music. Yeah. You're directly connected to to film in, in, in a couple of ways, obviously, for people who don't know. But um, I wanted to ask you, because Jason, your brother, I think he's your brother-in-law, Jason, if I'm... Um, my, uh, my wife's cousin. cousin. Right, right. So he is a music, he's a definite audio file, whatever. Has he turned you on to any really good albums, which you, which you love to this day? That's Jason all Schwartz, he does. Huh? That that's all he does every every uh yeah that's all I mean there's too many to uh I think that's what he does to ev all his friends and everyone he's uh that's probably his favorite subject is to talk about music and to talk about gear as well we talk uh <laughs> uh he's he loves musical equipment and um he he knows obscure like he knows albums upon out because i listen to a show sometimes on sirius whenever i can and it's just like i am recording from a parking garage in the airport in denver and uh and he's talking about like and it's wow this is great like where is this from you know yeah also he has a lot of great concepts for his podcast right that, that some of them don't show up because he just has too many ideas. So there, there has to be one, but I wish he would do them all. Like he comes to the studio often when we finish an album, he yells the song. And in just one, you know, you played one, the song once and you'd be like, yeah, the, the minor sevenths at the beginning of the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and we in the band, we spent two years fighting about like, no, to me, this is the bridge. This is called, just about the 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 and for him it's like it sums up like okay for him it's the bridge i think we can all agree that this is the bridge and continue on continuing on with the with the movie theme how the um do you have a favorite soundtrack well the graduate is the first one that comes to my mind because it's one of the it's the favorite soundtrack but also favorite movie so that's the double that's the combo makes it more powerful and then proper rain is my f i think proper rain really uh is more um instrumental in how we are writing music and we because i don't think we were as influ not the graduate didn't really influence our songwriting but Proper Rain, a lot of instruments on the on that record, a lot of drum machines, a lot of effects, a lot of 
things uh, stayed with us and we bought these machines and we, we, and we're still, you know, the drum break in at the beginning of take me with you is still something that, uh, that I is never really leaves me. There's great music of like, we recently, we rewatched Koyan Iskatsi. Uh, oh, right. Which, which was. Philip uh, Glass. Yeah. Philip Glass, which was, um, with, we discovered late, we discovered, we really enjoyed it in 12, 13 years ago and was, we really took a lot from it, uh, just on how to write new songs in the studio and how to, uh, we started to uh, have a little bit of visual cues, you know, or even when we worked on soundtracks for my wife, Sophia, we, we started, yeah, having the working, making music to, uh, to uh, the visual cues or, or, or so there's, there are a few, um, yeah, that one is a little bit instrumental too, that in, in the sense that we took more from it than just the joy of listening to it. Thomas, you've been so far a wealth of knowledge. Thanks. Thanks so much. We got a couple of more, couple more fun questions and we'll let you get on to your busy day. I'm going to segue again because you mentioned the graduate and uh, my nephew isn't looking for older older woman but uh what's a good i'm trying to get <laughs> i'm trying to help him with his dating life so what's a good romantic record you're from near the city of love so what's a well, good there, rom- there's a great song that's called the todd run run song the from runt we're gonna get you a woman that's like the most that's like um it has it it could be it's not a bro it's not a frat boy bro song which is refreshing you know it doesn't have that <laughs> but and at the same time it's the same it's just a a very genuine honest uh that would be that's the first thing that comes to my mind thank you a couple of quick fun questions weed water that's that's, that's if you want women i'm i'm not suggesting that <laughs> don't uh don't yeah it's not coming. No, no. Weed, water, and... Weed, water, or wine to listen to and write your favorite music. I don't think I need anything. Or, or Exhaustion is a good, you know, being at the end of it, having, you know, sleep, sleep deprived, sadly. Uh, creativity comes with me. It comes with us. I think it comes more with things that are not pleasant, sadly, you know, it's not when it, you, cause it's almost like a survival instinct is you'll put it, you put yourself in a corner and you have to, you, I, I mean, you hear these stories of uh, bands being locked in a studio by their producers, you know, to be like, you'll never come out if you, so it's the same idea that you, you have to be, it's not really, it's not, it's not a lot of fun to write a song. It's fun for, one one percent of the time and the 99 percent is just trying to figure out how it works i think bob dylan compared it to throwing up it's therapeutic but it's also it's it's uh it's it's fun when it's done when you share it together and then it's a great life to be a musician but it's not the it's not you know being creative doesn't go along with i'm sure it does for people for certain people but uh not for us, sadly. Coffee with an artist, alive or dead? I'm terrible because I don't drink coffee, but I have a <laughs> I have a Coke with Lou Reed. Okay, cool. cool you know cool. that video, the Andy Warhol Coca Cola. Yeah. Uh, that'd be my. Yeah. Or uh, or with uh, Lucio Battisti, a coffee in Rome. You know. That's probably the best coffee. I drink coffee because that's probably the best coffee you'll ever drink with the best company. Record of your generation, your high school years. Loveless for me. For me, that was my bloody Valentine, Loveless. Words of wisdom for your fans and our audience. It's hard to give advice. You know, it's like, I like the Brian Eno um, card game because it's, random advices it's it, it has a random thing to it it's not a direct 
teacher moment, teacher to student moment. It has these random things uh, that can guide you somehow. Or, but yeah, not really. Yeah, I need more time for what. <laughs> Thomas, thanks so much. Thank uh, you, it Charles. was so much fun, and I hope to see you in Vancouver soon. Good Thank luck you. with that. Good luck with the new record, which is dropping. I'm very excited for you. Thank you. Take Good care. luck to your to the the nephew uh, finding his. <laughs> Thank you. Work. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Hi, I'm Mark Henning, the director and editor of Records in My Life. Guess you liked it because we're here at the end of the video. So hit like, leave us a comment, and subscribe. And if you're feeling supportive, consider clicking over to patreon.com forward slash RIMLTV, and you can help us out there. Cheers. See you next time.